our theme for 2024, Abiding in Oneness, Continuing the Work of Jesus in the Earth. I have been preaching and speaking to you concerning that, and um, I have been heavily impressed today, it seems like, to take a a detour, and I want you to listen, and to ask the Lord to speak to you individually and, and Corporately, before I read the, the uh, I'll read the the, the the scripture that has been read, but I I, I want to reiterate. When God was speaking to Ezekiel. The, the the purpose of shepherds, of pastors. And sometimes mischaracterized. Sometimes churches, congregation make pastors their God. They 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 put them on pedestals, and that's not that's not that that's not God's purpose for a pastor or a shepherd. Is this to be a covering and to be the intercessor, the, the major intercessor for the people, to hear from him and to convey to the people. On the other hand, there are folks, there are people that don't take the shepherds serious enough. They think, I know as much as you do, you do. I know more than you do. You can't help me, and I, I can go to Jesus on my own. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> there, there's, and this is, this is a, 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 this is a true story. I, I worked with a, a young man who was a division one football player, scholarship, and, and he, he said they have a star defensive back on the football team, and when the team huddled, he was standing by himself. So the coach called time out and went over and asked him, w w why aren't you with the team? He said, the team needs to get with me. He said, no, no, you need to get with the team. He said, but right now, your place is over there on the bench. He said, you, you need some basic lessons. So it's the power of oneness, and the, the shepherd is to lead, be an example, and to promote oneness and bringing the flock together. And that's my only desire my only desire, my only desire. And I've said to the City of Life over and over again, if I can't help you, I just don't want to hurt you. I, I would rather turn in my keys this afternoon and never come back to hurt one of the sheep of Jesus. But while I'm here, I want to do the biddings of the Lord. 
And as Jude was about to write, he found it necessary to warn the people. And then Jude, which is one of the single chapters of the Bible, Jude writes to the church, and he said that it was needful. He says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The closer we come to the rapture, the more you're going to see diversions and people pulling you away from the scriptures. Even notice in the revelation that the seven churches which characterize the whole entirety of the church age, the church at Ephesus, the church at Smyrna, the church at Laodicea, the church at Philadelphia, you, you notice it's, the scripture says the church, the church. It didn't say the Baptist church, the Catholic church, the Methodist church, the Pentecostal church, the Presbyterian church. All of that is man-made. God says the church, the church. I, I was talking to my sister who is Kojic a long time ago, and I told her, I said, I'm, I'm going to Church of God in Christ tonight. She said, oh, yes, 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 which one? And I told her my church. She said, that's, oh, you're, that's apostolic. I said, I, said, I said, listen, God only has one church. There's the, the, that church is in Christ Jesus. So I am in the church of God in Christ. I'm in the Baptist church because the, the baptism is in his name. I'm in the Catholic Church because it is the universal church. I am a Jehovah Witness. Well, I know who Jehovah is. God calls the shepherd to be the watchman on the wall. Our theme, abiding in oneness, continuing the work of Jesus. But from today, it ties into oneness, but I want you to listen. Watchman, what time is it? Watchman, on the wall, what time is it? I'm going to start my message today with two words. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Don't get comfortable in this thing we call terra firma, the earth, like it's going to continue without end. That, that when people preach to you about the rapture and the coming of Jesus. It's like, oh, yeah, they're trying to scare you. For, for, listen, I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm just trying to do my job. Watchman on the wall, what time is it? What time is it? The second chapter, the second passage was St. John 15. No matter what time it is, this is, uh, this will always be the same. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. He is the vine dresser. I am the true vine. And, and uh, that, that, that gives us, like, what time is it? 
What's going on? What, 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 what does it all mean? And then what is the answer? The answer is the true vine. And, and, and without prompting, I know what, what the sermonic presentation, what the Lord is saying, trust me. Trust me. No matter what time it is, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Put your trust in me. Hallelujah. He's a God that never changes. Our message focus today is re redeeming the time that the days are evil. Folks, you make plans. You're making plans for vacation, for next year, career plans. We're doing, we're going to do this, such and such and that and that. Be careful to put in your planning, what time is it? What time is it? The purpose of the watchman. Hallelujah. Speak to you today after redeeming the time. Now, the purpose of the watchman of Jesus. The purpose is to warn the people of the signs of the time. I can't tell you what month, what day, what hour the rapture will occur. But I will tell you this, be ready. I can tell you this, we are closer today than we were yesterday. I'll tell you this, every breath we take, we are closer to the rapture the catching away of the church of Jesus. And the second coming of Jesus is not the rapture. That won't come until after the tribulation period. When Jesus comes to the earth again, when the rapture occurs, he comes in the, in the firmament and catches the saints away. He doesn't come to the earth. He comes to take us out of the earth. And then we will be with him. Hallelujah. I, I was doing a, 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 a evangelizing when we were having some event, I think the, the family event, and, and as the Lord would have it, I was at a quick trip and, and, and I encountered some gentlemen that were family, some, a group of people, and they were all dressed up, and so I went and, and talked to them and found out that they were Jehovah Witnesses. And so we got into, I said, oh, you, they said, yeah, Jehovah. I said, I'm a Jehovah Witness too. And they thought they had one. I said, yes, yes, yes. I said, but I know who Jehovah is. His name is Jesus. And we started a conversation about their Jehovah versus the Jehovah of the Bible. And, and in fact, as we were discussing passages from the scripture that legitimate Jesus of the New Testament as Jehovah God of the old, there was a teenage girl, one of the daughters, and she was really listening and getting into it and drawing near, wanting to hear what I had to say. And the father said, get back in the truck. So when we, when we left, he said to me something that sticks with me. He said, well, Pastor, regardless of your conviction of Jehovah, what are you doing to prepare your people for the tribulation period? And I said, pointing them to Jesus. Pointing them to Jesus. The priority or the purpose of the watchman 
of Jesus to warn the people of the signs of the time. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it talks about the children of Issachar, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it says, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Now, at this time in the history of Israel, this was between the end of the reign of Saul and the beginning of David. And the nation was in turmoil, instability, didn't know a struggle for power, uncertainty, misdirection, and what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? When, when, when Saul, when David received the word that Saul had committed suicide, that he was dead, he was wounded and he finished himself off or had his cohorts to put an end to him. David knew when he was about 15 that he was going to be king of Israel. He never purported himself. He never, he never walked around Israel saying, don't you know I'm going to be your next king? No. David was still faithful. These are lessons for us. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. So, now that he had gotten the message that Saul was expired, Saul had died, David said, a prince has, his chief arch enemy, David said, a prince has fallen in Israel. He asked the Lord, now is it time? I don't want to move without your direction. I understand that that you have been preparing me for this role, but, but I don't want to move. I don't want to get ahead of you. I want to walk with you. I want to be led by you. Is it, is, it, is it time now? And then when the Lord assured him it was time now, listen, he said, then where do I go? Lead me and guide me. For if you lead me and guide me, I shall not stray. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lord, I don't want to take a step unless you lead me. I need you to guide me. Don't leave me to myself. Mm -hmm. So Issachar, they, they were children, men of understanding. Understanding of the times. Why? So that they would know what Israel ought to do. And that to understand the times we're living in, city of life, what, what, what should be our response as a church corporately and then individually? Well, what should be my, how should I live every day? Should I live every day like another summer, another winter, another fall, keep going, going, going? Should I be on the alert? Should I live circumspectly? Should I live vigilantly saying, is this the day? Could it be the day? Could it be the day? Could this be the day? Even so, come now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For us today, the times of Israel mirror our times. Instability, 
turmoil, struggle for power, international wars, turbulence in the government, unsettling in our cities, crime. And then individually, sickness, disease, struggle to survive, family problems. What, 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 what should I do? What should I do? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Man at his best is altogether vanity. Man at his best, at his mountaintop, is nothing but vanity. Psalms 82 and 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All of the foundations of the earth are out of course. What God is saying, the foundations that I put in place for man to inhabit the earth no, nowhere in Scripture that God said that, that he, he, he created the earth for man's habitation. Not the moon, not Saturn, not Venus. We're trying to go there, and we can't live in peace here. All of the foundations of the earth are out of course. Jesus says, the foundations that are put in place, you have taken it and corrupted it. I created you, male and female. Now you're saying, no, I can change my gender. You're saying, I can have same-sex marriages. Listen, everything that God put in place, man has corrupted. It didn't just start now. No. Look, look, look at Judas. How did Judas betray Jesus? With a kiss. Something that was given to man as a symbol of love, acceptance, embrace. Now the enemy took it and perverted it and made it a symbol of rebellion and traitor and treason. Now, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, folks, I don't get in an argument with people when they talk about this, hom this homosexuality, men or women, they don't, I don't get into it with them because I just have one response to that. Listen, whether you were born that way or not, the argument shouldn't be how you got in the ditch. I want to talk to somebody to help me get out of the ditch. If you're heterosexual, you were still born in the ditch. Homosexual, you're still in the ditch. you got the same problem. How do we get out of the ditch? I got the answer. Jesus is the answer. He'll straighten you up. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the answer. For the Republicans, he's the answer for the Democrats. Jesus is the answer for our nation. Jesus is the answer for Israel. Jesus is the answer for the Arabs. Jesus is the answer for the world. Our natural world all around us is falling apart. Now, I have pictured the clock there. You might look at that and say, 
that pastor's trying to portray to us what time it is. That, that's not daylight saving time. That's a doomsday clock. Now, just let me take a listen to me for a little bit. There is a committee of scientists that was started after the creation of the atomic bomb because they saw that the atomic bomb was going to lead to a proliferation of high-powered weapons that would destroy mankind. And mankind realized that the nations that were powerful, United States, Russia, I think they are seven or eight now, nuclear armed countries. And Russia is the most nuclear, even greater than the United States. They have more nuclear capacity than the United States. Man came up with a summit, they call it MAD, to, so that to manage nuclear armament, that they realized that if we got into a nuclear war, it would be M-A-D, Mutual Assured Destruction. You look at our world now, this committee, the Doomsday Committee, these scientists and physicists, these are scientific prognosticators, and this is their assessment of where mankind is, that we are ticking because of Nuclear, the warnings of nuclear war, the climate change, and artificial intelligence. That we are that close to wiping out ourselves. Mr. Putin has already said that if, if NATO puts boots on the ground in Ukraine, he says all bets are off for nuclear war. If one country pulls the plug, what's another country going to do? Pull the plug. Folks, we got weapons in Russia and weapons in the United States in our nuclear submarines. We can destroy the world like that. But guess what? Russia can do the same thing. They can push a button and wipe out New York. These are the times that we're living in. What, what, what's the answer? Jesus is the answer. Watchman on the wall, what time is it? It's time to know Jesus. Hide me in your word. Hide me in your word. Hide me in your word. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Our protection is in Jesus. Except the Lord build the house. Except the Lord build the house. They labor but in vain. But if the Lord builds a house, nobody can tear it down. Nuclear weapons can't tear it down. Jesus said in St. John 15 and 1, I am the true vine. There are other vines. Your education system is a vine. Your political system is a vine. Your economic system is a vine. Your family and social system is a vine. Your religious system is a vine. But all of those vines will die. I am the true vine. 
I am the vine that will never die. What branch are you hooking your hooking up to? What vine are you hooking up to? What vine are you hooking up to? Are you plugging your branch into your family? Love your family. But don't make them your God. Don't make your job your God. Don't make the political system your God. Jesus said, all of these vines are going to dry up. All of the vines that's going to dry up. You can see it every day. Our education system is going down the tube. You can see students fighting and threatening teachers. And listen, when they get to first grade, they know more profanity than English. We give them every device. By the time they get three years old, they can get on their sets. We give them all of these tablets and hookups. We give them everything except Jesus. And then we wonder why we're in the shape we're in. I thank God for godly parents who put a foundation under their children. It's all right. It's all right to, to get them connected and, and to educate them and to promote them. Yeah, but make sure that they're building on the foundation except the Lord build the house. Jesus is the true vine. How do we how do we do? We have to keep Jesus as the focus and the objective of all that we do. Set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. Everything in this earth is going to burn up. Everything in this earth is going to burn up. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. See your life? I want to see us all around the throne of Jesus. giving him glory and, pr and praising him for what he had done for us. He had done everything for us. He took away the penalty of our sins. He has given us the power over sin. That if we use the tools that he has given us, the word and prayer and fasting and, and abiding, that we can overcome everything that the devil throws at us. We are troubled on every side, but we are not in distress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. He is the true vine. We are, we are perplexed. We can't figure it out naturally. Why? Is all of this going on? Why is all of this happening? You, you, you look around, you know. You see nothing but personal greed and thirst for power. Putin unprovoked 
invasion of uh, Ukraine and, and, and Hamas, when they, they, October the 7th, when they went into Israel and killed over a thousand people, and, and then Israel's response to it. Listen, and they're going to wipe out Hamas. You can, listen, you, even if they could, you can wipe out Hamas, but you can't wipe out the devil. Because when Hamas is gone, the devil got another Hamas that's worse than the Hamas that's there now. You need somebody who can deal with the devil. And that's Jesus himself. You, 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 you can put, you can put a, a, a perpetrator in jail and, and, and even take his life. But guess what? When the devil finished using him as an instrument and he can't serve the devil no more, that spirit leaves and get into somebody else and do the same thing again. Because you can't put the devil in jail. You put the instrument in jail. But we got somebody who can arrest the devil. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The devil believe and tremble. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It should... Drive us to oneness in him. To put on the whole armor of God. To, to hide ourselves in him. Let him be the helmet of salvation. Let him be our breastplate of righteousness. Have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having the sword of the spirit, which we can fight every attack of the devil. Having the word of God, our loins gird about with truth. Fight with the word of God. Jesus, after his 40 days in the wilderness, the enemy came to attack him. The devil, Satan. See, what the devil fights us with is his emissaries. Jesus was dealing with Satan himself. Jesus fought him with the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. It worked for Jesus. It'll work for us. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. The more one we become, we lose our identity. And we become immersed in him. It is no longer I, but it's the Jesus that lives in me. Hallelujah. We should be so immersed in him, no matter how the devil squeeze you. Like I said in Bible class, listen, if you go to the, to the store and buy a tube of, of, of Crest or Colgate toothpaste, when, when you get down, I, I'm one of the ones that... God bless Brother Johnny Jones, who's going home to be with the Lord. He said, he and I are the only one. I, I roll the tube up. I roll it up. I roll it. And then when it gets to the end, I squeeze it and squeeze it with this little nub. I said, I'm on every drop of toothpaste out of here. But guess what? Now, the, the, even if I take a plies and squeeze it, I can put a vice grip on it. Guess what? Brill cream, br brill cream is never going to come out of a crest toothpaste. You know why? Because there's only crest toothpaste in it. When we get full of Jesus, doesn't matter how the devil squeeze us, nothing but Jesus is going to come out. That's why we need to be lost in him. We need to be lost in him. It need to be all about him and none about us. 
then when we are lost in him, no matter how the devil fights me, then nothing going to come out but Jesus because there's nothing in me but Jesus. I need more of Jesus, more of Jesus, more of Jesus. We need it for the church. We need it for the church. Because as one, when we are one, we have about 27 different ministries in the city of life. And when one ministry is involved, every ministry should be, what can I do to help? What can I, how can I be involved? Every ministry, every ministry, how can I assist you and even if the ministry can't then listen i tell you what we're going to be doing we're going to be praying for you and then I, I, i'm going to volunteer but we're going to be praying for you listen the choir should be one we shouldn't have arguments about uniforms we shouldn't have arguments about listen what do i need to do to be one with my brother one with my sister when 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 Solomon dedicated the temple, the scripture says that in 1 Chronicles, the 5th chapter, 11th of verse 14, that the singers were as one, the altos were as one, the, 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 the sopranos, every, all of the choir and the instruments and the band, they were as one. They were as one so much that the priests could not minister. The cloud that led Israel by, the, by day, the cloud was Jesus. The cloud inhabited the temple, and it filled the temple with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that happens, foes will be filled with the Holy Ghost, sitting right in their seats. People will be delivered. People will be healed because the presence of God is there. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, when Jesus told the disciples, you go to, to, into Jerusalem, to a city, into a street called Straight. Go to the upper room. When they were in the upper room, the scripture says in Acts 2 and 1 that they were in one place with one accord. And one spirit came from heaven. One sound. It was nothing but oneness, oneness, oneness. Uh, but guess what happened? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Oneness! Oneness! When Jesus, when Jairus came to Jesus about his daughter, she stopped by and, and, and you can raise her from the dead. And when he got into the house where Jairus' daughters were, there were folks in there, they were doubters. You know what Jesus did with them? He said, y'all put them out. The people that were left were there with one accord. That's what you want. You don't need a crowd. You just need some folks around you with one accord. Hallelujah. We are going to obey. We are going to abide. We are going to be the remnant. And we're going to watch Jesus work. Hallelujah. God told Gideon, get, get Israel together. 32,000. He said, listen, tell the folks that are scary, go home. And no, no, nobody's going to mark you. Guess how many went? 22,000. They had 10,000 left. God told Gideon, you still got too many. Take the 10,000 down to the water and have them to lap it like a dog. Oh, he going to embarrass me? Listen, like I said, <laughs> when somebody tell you you a fool for Jesus, you know what I would tell them? I couldn't, I couldn't think of nobody better to be a fool for. I, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember the songwriter, the, the rhythm and blues singer that said, everybody is somebody's fool. Well, if you're going to be somebody's fool, then let me be Jesus' fool.
The passion, let me close with this, the passion of the watchman. The passion of the watchman is for oneness of Jesus for his church. To allow lives to be guided and developed by the word of God. It's a great joy, the greatest joy for me to see the children of Jesus develop and grow and be strong in the Lord. To see them endure struggles and hard trials in their lives, to go through death of loved ones, and to see how resilient they are, they come back strong. That strengthens me. To see them in the fight and still talk strong about Jesus. To see them in the valley and still hold up the bloodstained banner. Hallelujah. That's fulfilling to the watchman of Jesus saying, Jesus, they're trusting you. They're hearing your voice, and they're walking in obedience. They are abiding, and it's being manifested. Hallelujah. To point the flock to Jesus, and to allow him to make oneness a reality in all of us. Let me close with this. Francis Schaeffer was a 20, 20th century theologian, and I think he was questioned, they were asking different people, if, if you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that tomorrow at 12 o'clock, the rapture would occur. What would you do between now and then? Some people said, hey, listen, I would suspend everything. I would fast and pray and be in my word. Some people said, I'd go to church and I'd be in the church praising him until that hour. Yes, Francis Schaeffer, what would you do? He said, Cut down a tree. Cut down a tree? He said, yes. Explain that. He said, that's what I had planned to do anyhow. He said, if I have to alter my plans, then maybe I shouldn't be doing it anyway. She said, but whatever I plan, I'm in Jesus. So if I'm going to be cutting down a tree, when he comes, he's going to rapture me from cutting down a tree. If, if my job is a nurse in the hospital, I'm going to be on my assignment, and I'm going to be raptured from there. If I'm a school teacher, wherever I am, I'm going to be in him when he comes back. If you have to change, your routine because you think Jesus is coming tomorrow you ought to change it anyhow the songwriter said if my life is not pleasing you ought to change the way you walk you ought to change the way you talk you ought to change the way you live that your living will be pleasing to him so whenever he comes whenever your last breath is you can leave with glory let's stand be ready saints be ready be ready don't be getting ready be ready hallelujah Hallelujah. I, I, didn't, I didn't get many whippings from my mother, but one whipping I got from my mother, a time she told me to wash the dishes. And she came back about 30 minutes later, and I hadn't touched a dish. She said, did I tell you to wash the dishes? She said, I told her, I said, I'm, I'm getting ready. She said, let me help you get ready. 
folks, don't be getting ready. Be ready. Be ready. Let's read this together. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up. The devil is feeding the world a great dose of anesthesia, prosperity, and hunger for power, political gains, personal gains, finance, career, all that. He's feeding the world a great dose of his own, his anesthesia, to put you to sleep. For the saints, instead of putting us to sleep, it ought to wake us up. It ought to wake us up. Look up! Look up! Your redemption draweth nigh. When the Lord takes us out of the earth, this is what you got to look for. Only with our eyes, Psalms 91 and 8, will we behold the reward of the wicked. You won't be here when Jesus exacts judgment against unrighteousness in the world. We'll be looking down saying, if it had not been, if it had not been, if it had not been, I would have been right there. But thanks be to God, he brought me over. He brought me out. Let's look to the Lord. My first appeal for those for salvation. If you hear, you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. You haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Come. Jesus is here for you today. Don't let it be said too late. He said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Today is your day of salvation. Hallelujah. My first appeal is for those, if you have questions, come. We have clergy that can expound the word of God to you. Need understanding? Come. You need baptism? Come. You need the Holy Ghost? Come. Lord Jesus, we exalt you. We magnify you we praise you for you alone are worthy Lord we thank you today for your great salvation that you purchased for us at Calvary when you said it is finished to telestai consummatum est now come unto me all ye that labor and I will give you rest. Bring me your burden. I'll give you my peace. Bring me your sins. I'll give you my blood. I'll give you rest. I'll give you reward. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. 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 Lord, I pray for the soul that you're talking to. I pray for the soul you're talking to. I pray, Lord, help them to respond. Oh, God, overcome the voices of the devil telling them, not now, not now, not now. Rebuke that, Lord. Rebuke that. Help them to say, what must I do to be saved? Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Oh, saints pray. Saints pray. The Lord is talking to a soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus while he has given you an opportunity. Hallelujah. All right. My next appeal is for those that desire prayer, for strength, for healing, trials, anything. Come, come, come. The altar is open. Come for prayer. Hallelujah. Elder Field. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody else. The Lord was speaking to us today. Wake up. If you need prayer right now, you know that the Lord was speaking directly to you. Lord, I want to be ready when you return. Lord, I need your strength. I need your help. I don't have it all together. I'm working on, working on it, trying to get it together. But I need you to work on me yet. They're yet coming. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I come with a repentant heart. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I know that you are the purifier. I know that you are the one that, that sent the word to us, Lord, to wash us by your word. Somebody else, if the Lord is speaking to you, Lord, I want to be ready when you return. I want to be ready. I want to be able to see you in glory. No matter what I've been through, no matter what I've been challenged with, Lord, I need prayer. I need you. They're yet coming. In the name of Jesus, he's calling you, man, woman, boy, or girl. Come on, pray, church. He's calling all of us to be ready in the name of Jesus. Ah, a word like that, you may feel like, Lord, that word wasn't for me, but it was. It was for the whole church. It was for the whole church in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless them that's on the altar. Bless those that are in the pew. We all need your help. Make us, mold us, help us, Lord, to keep our mind stayed on you. Help us, Lord, to set our affection on things that are above, upon your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that we will keep our mind on heaven. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that you'll bless those that are that's on the altar right now. Ask the elders and minister, minister to them. Minister to us in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we trust you right now. We thank you right now. Somebody else, the Lord is speaking to you. He said that word designed just for us. Hallelujah. Lord, you know what your people need. Uh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I give it over to you. I want to be ready. I want to be used by you in the name of Jesus. Why they're ministering, why they're praying. If you need prayer, we're going to ask you to come. If you need prayer, we're going to ask you to come in the name of Jesus. Oh, right now, Lord, bless on the altar. Ah, oh, God, let the elders and minister, minister to your people. Speak a rhema word right now, Lord, for we have already heard a rhema word from the man of God. Ah, Lord, I thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do, what you're doing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, church. Come on, bow your head and pray. If you're not coming this way, minister and pray for those right now that's on the altar. Hallelujah. You are God. You are the almighty God. Lord, you know and we believe you and we thank you help us to keep our minds stayed on you we heard the word dear god to wake up the watchman is on the wall dear god and you know what your people have need of for we bless your name and we hollow your name and we lift you up oh god in this place in this place have your way lord hallelujah have your way lord hallelujah why they yet praying if you need prayer? We're going to ask you to come. Why they yet ministering if you need prayer? No matter what it is, no matter what it is, uh, give it over to the Lord and we trust him right now. And we believe him right now. No matter what the circumstance may be, give it to Jesus. He's the only answer. Ah, Lord, for our struggle. He's the only answer that we're dealing, that we need. Uh, are they yet coming? He's the only answer. 
Jesus. All power is in your name, Lord. All power. He's the almighty God. He is God all by himself. There is nobody like him. Oh, God, I thank you for the victory. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing on the altar. We thank you, Lord, for those who are yet coming. We thank you. Hallelujah. Why they yet praying? They're ministering to the soul. I'm going to make a third appeal. There are some that say, preacher, I've already heard the word, already been baptized in the name of the Lord. But I believe the Lord has sent me here to be a member of the city of life. If that's you, man, woman, boy or girl, we're going to ask you to come right now in the name of Jesus. If that's you, man, woman, boy or girl, we're going to ask you to come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Why they yet ministering? When I hear a message like I heard today, hallelujah, I ask the Lord to search me. And, and many times we need to search ourselves. We know that we need the Lord's help. We know where we're weak in. We know where, where we need the Lord to strengthen us. And we're asking God to help us and make us and mold us. In the name of Jesus, why they yet ministering? Hallelujah, why they yet ministering? Amen. If you, if you need prayer. We're going to ask you to come. If you need prayer, we're going to ask you to come. Hallelujah. Why are they yet ministering? Uh, we don't know what they need on the altar, but the Lord knows. Hallelujah. The Lord knows what every household needs today. He knows what every circumstance that we are in right now. We trust you and we believe you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Uh, can we say amen? Come on, give the Lord praise for the word of God. Hallelujah. And for the word of God and for the man of God. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Amen. We thank God for the word. We thank God for our dear pastor. A watchman on the wall. He's a watchman on the wall. We're living in a very troublesome time today. And if we ever needed the Lord, we need him right now. If we ever needed the Lord, God help us to keep our mind stayed on you. Hallelujah. Help us to be able to keep our mind and affection stayed on you. God, sometimes we get off course, but we need your help. We need your strength. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He is the almighty God. And he knows every need. Hallelujah. While you're standing at this time, we're going to go before the Lord with prayer one more time. Amen. We're going to pray and pray for everyone that's in the congregation. My Lord, we don't know what tomorrow may hold. But we know who holds tomorrow. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands right now. Righteous Father, we bless you, Lord. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the one that we call on, Lord. You are the one who have made us and not we ourselves. We are your people, Lord. The sheep of your pastor, Lord. We know, dear God, that you know the path that we take, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would direct our ways, Lord, uh, as we acknowledge you in all of our ways. Direct our path in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word, dear God, be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. Bless us, Lord, as we walk in this world and in this time. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding, Lord. I thank you for forgiving us, Lord. I thank you for every soul that came to the altar, Lord. God, you know the needs of your people. And we thank you and we give you the victory. We give you the praise for all that you have done, all that you will do. You are our God. And there is nobody like you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray the prayer of dismissal. Righteous Father, bless us as we leave this place. Never your presence. Get the glory out of our life. And we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Uh, let everyone say amen. Fellowship with somebody. Find two or three people and say, wake up. The watchman said, wake up. Hallelujah.